In today's video, I'm gonna show you a few different ways that you can use loops and proximity loops and bevels, anything related to edge loops. I'm gonna show you some very cool techniques to kind of make your workflow a bit more efficient and very easy to use as well. So let's get started. If you're brand new to hard surface modeling and wanna learn our full workflow in about two weeks of time with just 30 to 60 minutes a day, like nearly 5,000 students have done at this point, then check out our accelerator program in the link below. So first thing I wanna show you is when you have a texture and you want to add in a loop. So I just added in a texture here with material works and I'm gonna change from procedural mode here over to UVs. It doesn't matter if you're using this add-on, this can be for anything. But if you have a texture applied and then you go into edit mode, right? I'm in material mode, by the way, so I can preview that texture. If I add in a loop cut with control R, watch what's gonna happen. I'm gonna add it in, there's no issues now, but if I try to move this on the Y axis in this case, look what happens to the texture. It starts stretching and distorting. Now, yes, you could go in here and you could just unwrap it again, but that's slow, that's inefficient, that's not how you wanna be working, right? So instead of moving this manually on an axis, what you wanna do is you wanna double tap G. If you double tap G, this will basically move it across the model as opposed to physically moving that texture. And you can see the difference here. I can just replace this while maintaining my UVs, whereas if I don't do that, it's just gonna stretch them. So make sure when you're moving this, when you're doing UV unwrapping, you double tap the G key. All right, next thing I wanna show you is how to quickly use proximity loops without adding them in manually. So let's say I add in a sub D to this cube and I want to tighten it up. Obviously I could go in here, I could press control R, drop in a loop and then you know bevel that, right? Could also go in here, kind of do the same thing. You get the idea but this is uneven and it's slower. So instead what you can do is you can select the entire thing. You can press control B, that'll bevel everything. You're gonna scroll up one time and then you're gonna press the P key and then you're just gonna move your mouse to the right and make sure that in this bevel setting right here that your profile shape is set here to one. This is gonna give you a natural proximity loop and you're not gonna to have to add that in manually because the bevel has done it for you. And now if I add in my subdivision, you're gonna see those edges are holding very nicely and it's perfectly even and perfectly consistent as you can see here. So if you wanna do that, use the bevel modifier. All right, next situation. Let's say you have an object and you want to subdivide it, but you want to easily go in here and kind of tighten this up, right? Instead of you know adding in these loops manually here, what you can actually do is you can select one edge, you can press Control Shift R. And what will this will do is it will add a proximity loop, a loop cut, but evenly in both directions. This is essentially offsetting this edge right here in both directions. So let's do that again. Control Shift and R, and you're going to see it's offsetting these edges here in both directions perfectly evenly. So that's just another way to use loop cuts like this. Next thing, let's say I wanted to kind of move one of these loops, but in the other direction. To say, for example, I double tap G and I wanna slide this, but let's say I actually wanna go in the other direction. I can't. So what you actually wanna do is you wanna make sure you're sliding along the edge. And if you want to go in the opposite direction where you don't have an edge, you can press the C key and that will align the orientation on that normal and allow you to slide in the opposite direction as well. This also works with the actual edge. So for example, uh, maybe a better demonstration is with another loop here, but say for example, I wanted to slide this edge, right? I can press the C key and it's basically gonna do the same thing. It's a little, little bit more limited than with a vertex by nature, but you can also do that with edges as well. Now, what do you do if you forget about some of the menus here? What do you need to do? Do you need to memorize them? Well, fortunately, you can just press Control E and all the settings that I've shown you here, or pretty much all of them, are gonna be available here in the Edge menu. A lot of people don't know about this menu, but if you just press Control E, this is going to open up every single menu that allows you to operate on the Edge. So for example, I can mark seams here. Obviously, that's not the point of this video, but you can do all the things related to edges here in this menu. So 
you have loop cuts, right? You have your offset that I just showed you before, right? You also have your subdivide if you want to subdivide it. You also have, you know, things like bevel. You have, you know, some of these other settings here as well. You can extrude edges, which obviously you're going to use the basic commands for that. But if you ever want to access some of these more advanced menus, just press Control E, go in here, and you're going to find all of them. All right, now what if you wanted to align a certain loop along another set of loops? So for example, in edge mode here, we have this set of edges, but we also have this set of edges right here. So if I press Control R, I can obviously add in some loops all the way through these faces. So if I click, naturally it's going to slowly align to the top or it's going to slowly align to the bottom. But if you don't want to have that average, you can actually align it by pressing the E key and then pressing the F key to either flip it to the top one, which is perfectly aligned, or you can obviously press F and flip that so it's aligned to the bottom as well. And if you want to keep the average, then obviously just leave it alone and just slide that by double tapping the G key. So those are some very basic operations that I use when I'm dealing with edges or edge loops or anything like that, that you can use in your workflow as well. Now, if you want to learn our entire hard surface modeling workflow from start to finish in about two weeks of time with just 30 to 60 minutes a day, I know that doesn't sound, you know, reasonable, but we've had over 5,000 students literally do this. We can do this for you as well because this program cuts out all the fluff and just gives you the 80-20 of information to get you very, very good at hard surface modeling very, very quickly on average in about two weeks of time. So if you want to learn more about that program, click the link below or in the pinned comment and check that out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.